Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Blue Ridge Silverhound. I'm your host Sean this evening and today we're going to talk about probably a coin that not a lot of people think about ever having any sort of value just because they're so plentiful but I'm happy to announce 1968 Lincoln cents actually has some value to it but you got to know what you're looking for okay just like any other date of coin there are a number of ways that you could find a coin that is worth some money all right so for those of you have that have never been onto one of my broadcasts or episodes first of all welcome thank you for joining hit that subscribe button if you like what you see in this one most importantly okay I like to talk about every conceivable thing that you could find within a specific date of coin we taught we've talked about a wide selection of various dates various denominations from pennies all the way up to dollar coins and beyond and I want you guys to feel like that you're getting kind of like your 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 airtime's worth out of this so we're going to discuss not only the coin itself how many were produced do they have any value in those high grades that everybody loves to collect but we're also going to kind of deep dive into various varieties and errors that may exist out there believe it or not they come up when you least expect them but 1968 pennies here we go we're going to get started in the best way possible and that's just for the first probably like five minutes of this video i'm going to discuss each individual branch mint of course there are philadelphia denver and san francisco minted coins that were all produced for general circulation the only exception is for 1968 for the san francisco coin they did produce a proof finish coin that was made specifically for the collector market okay these coins are going to exhibit a much stronger strike than what we call the quote unquote business strike coins or made for circulation type strikes so these coins again will have a strong strike they'll have those mirrored fields you might see some with the what they call a cameo finish on the devices on the actual raised uh design features of the coin you're going to see that nice frosting on there but we're not going to be talking about the proof coins just the circulated stuff that you see out in change and in rolls today so we're going to go ahead and kick it off with the philadelphia minted coin all right so the reason why that this is important of a date is because there are three recognizable business strike um coins okay the philadelphia philadelphia minted coin is the most um one of the more common dates out of the 1960s um how common you ask well one billion seven hundred and seven million eight hundred eighty thousand and nine hundred and seventy total pieces were produced for circulation through the philadelphia mint now of course with philadelphia you don't have the recognizable mint mark under the date unlike the denver and san francisco mint but we're going to see that here in a moment one of the key things that people like to collect about these coins is high grades now we have these third-party graders like pcgs ngc annex icg you have these third-party graders that that go out and they grade these coins people submit them they come back with a grade value in an encapsulated plastic holder and then you could possibly have a coin that's worth many hundreds if not thousands of dollars for 1968 we're going to go ahead and use the pcgs um, census uh, information so to speak for this coin so the highest grade that pcgs has assigned to a 1968 philadelphia coin is mint state 67 plus full red all right that's a really nice high grade only three examples were graded as such through that grading company now the highest uh the highest sale recorded for this particular coin was a mint state 67 plus and it sold for two thousand eight hundred eighty dollars uh august of 2018 through Stax Bowers. This is a really nice high end piece right here. Um, but as its numbers indicate, okay, it's a very highly minted coin, but not a lot of them were preserved in the highest grades. So definitely keep an eye out for coins that look like this. 
So the next uh, branch mint coin I wanted to talk about that you may be able to find and change would be the 1968D, Denver Minted Lincoln Cent. Now again, this is the highest minted coin out of the three for the date with 2,886,269,600 total pennies were produced by the Denver Mint, effectively making it one of the highest mintage of coins during the 1960s so in terms of the grading aspect of it pcgs has assigned only one coin at the highest grade level and that grade level is mint state 67 plus full red now you would assume because of the higher mintage value there would be more of these available in a 67 plus or higher that may not be the case 60 ad was widely circulated but that makes the cherry pick, the treasure hunt, that much more fruitful, guys. Much more in interesting and exciting. Now, PCGS has a price guide value of this coin in this grade at $3,000. However, I am happy to announce a sale by um, uh, Great Collections. Uh, not even a year ago. As a matter of fact, December 30th of 2018, they consigned this one loan 67 plus and it sold for four thousand six hundred seventeen dollars on that day making it um sixteen hundred dollars more than the actual pcgs price guide value now some would say well coins generally sell for less than price guide value a lot of the time however in this case because there is that one loan example it's sold for a hundred and fifty percent of that price guide value listed by pcgs that's a tremendous coin to look for some of you might be able to find that number two example now finally we're going to go ahead and take a look at the final branch mint coined for the lincoln cent during 1968 and that's the san francisco as evidenced by the tiny little s underneath the date now this one right here is the toughest out of the three mintage wise only 258,270,001 pieces were produced from the San Francisco Mint, making it the smallest mintage out of the three. Now, the highest grade assigned by PCGS for this San Francisco 1968 is Mint State 68 Red. Okay, that's a nice high lofty grade. Uh, only one example in the state with this mint mark exists and were graded by pcgs now that coin never made it onto the secondary market so we don't have any sales figures to go by for this one particular coin like we did the 68d however pcgs has a price guide value of a 68 that one loan coin of seven thousand five hundred dollars ladies and gentlemen as a matter of fact okay let me take that back seven thousand four hundred dollars i was one hundred dollars too high but doesn't really make any difference that's a buco amount of bucks guys keep an eye out for such high grade coins like the one that you see here on screen and you might want to throw a roll of the dice it's not easy to get some of these grades but you have to be really cautious about what you find Buy yourself a magnifier, take a look at the coin as close as you can, and I identify some of the cleanest examples that are free from nicks, carbon spots, and any other sort of distracting marks or features on the coin that might detract it from those high grade levels. So those are the three branch mid coins I wanted to talk about. Now let's go ahead and dive into something that's probably a little bit more um, kind of achievable for collectors like you and I and that's varieties and errors. So we're gonna take a look at the two most widely collected varieties for the 1968 Lincoln Cent. And I'm happy to say they are both Denver minted coins. So the first one that I wanted to draw your attention to is a 1968 D over D, okay? This is affectionately referred to in the variety field as a repunch mint mark, or RPM for short. This is also cataloged in the Cherry Picker's Guide as an FS501. Now this coin here, I'm not going to lie, it's relatively common. 
Coins in even the lowest grades still sell for that five to ten dollar region because people want a recognizable variety that is shown in the cherry pickers guide, which is one of the big resources for cherry picking some varieties. Okay, so people still want the 68D over D. Low grades again, we're talking about five to ten dollar coin, but that's better than the one cent face value that you had originally discovered. Now, higher grade examples do sell for a considerable amount of money more. We might be talking between $50 and $200, especially if it's graded through a third-party service. So you definitely want to keep an eye out for this coin. Be sure you use a magnifier that's about 10 times power or higher, so that way you can see the di diagnostical features of this coin's variety. So I do have one other variety to talk about, and this is the exciting one. This is one that people have a hard time looking for because either they just don't know about it, or they have a coin that's too low, for, too low of a grade to see the diagnostical features. But it's a 1968D uh, doubled die reverse uh, Lincoln cent. All right, this is again another marquee cherry pickers guide variety that people love to look for and they love to cherry pick and search for it okay especially in the higher grades now this coin right here if you're able to find one that's relatively circulated like a vf to au condition coin this is still a 20 to 50 dollar coin on its own and you don't necessarily have to have it graded that's the beauty part because it's a variety that speaks all on its own as being a recognizable and very sought after coin in the variety community. Now higher grade ex graded examples can hit up to 750 to $1,000. Um, you know, if it's a full red, maybe a mint state 67 example, those coins are gonna command all the money in the world for a double to die reverse. Now, what I didn't add, uh, I, at least I don't think so, this is also cataloged as an FS801. But go ahead and take a look at the close-up images that I have here of the reverse. Now you're going to have a lot of, lot of spread. Okay, the notching is going to be there. But you can see these diagnostical features may not be readily apparent on coins that are of lesser grade. All right, so make sure you have a strong enough magnifier and know what you're looking for in order to key this one in as a variety that you have discovered. Okay, but all in all, it's a really neat discovery piece. One in which that still commands a good chunk of money because double dies, in retrospect, are one of the most widely coveted varieties in coin collecting today. So keep an eye out for this one. Now, finally, I want to jump into a few errors that you may come across in your uh, searches. Now these are three coins that have sold on great collections, okay? They range from mild to wild, but we're gonna go ahead and get started with a few coins here. The first one that you see on screen is a 1968D. Now this one right here has kind of some funny things going on with it, as you can see on the images, but this one um, is a struck through error, okay? Both on the obverse or the front of the coin and also the reverse. So you kind of have this, uh, this anomaly where it looks like there's, um, there's a void in both the obverse, which is right above the date, and the reverse of the coin. Um, you know, something was on the coin before it was struck, and then it fought, fell out as soon as the coin was ejected from the striking chamber. Okay, but it's a really neat coin. This one graded PCGS Mint State 62 Brown, so it's seen a little bit of circulation. This one sold for $66 on Great Collections, July 20th of 2014. Probably not necessary to get it graded at this grade level, and it'll sell on its own, no problem. So that's the first error. The second error that I wanted to talk about is the one that you see here. Now this one is a little bit confusing to some. This is a 1968S. However, this one has a unique kind of error, which is called a die adjustment strike. Now, when coins are struck, all right, and they're struck in large numbers, the U.S. Mint employees actually test out a few of the coins to ensure that the pressurization of the strike is optimal, so that way you get a full upset obverse and reverse 
impression on both sides of the coin. Now there are times that they will try and strike a coin and the pressure is too light. Then you'll have a coin that looks like on screen here where you're kind of like missing a lot of the design detail, especially most notable in the middle of the coin and it kind of goes out from there. But this is another coin that you guys can look for out there um, and it's worth money. The error community loves die adjustment strikes. They don't come up that often in air, um, auctions. And most people just don't know what they have here. Some would assume that they are struck through grease errors, which look similar, but this one affects both sides of the coin. So this one right here is an Annex Mint, Mint State 60 Brown. This one sold on Great Collections June 23rd of 2013 for also $66. So that's another coin that can be sold on its own without any certification. So keep an eye out for stuff that look like this. And finally, the last error that I wanted to talk about is going to be this 1968 S uh, Lincoln cent. This one, however, was struck on a clad 10 cent Roosevelt dime planchet. All right. So this one here is pretty neat. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is a coin right here that obviously is silver looking, looks very much like a dime in not only its appearance, but also its size. This one is a PCGS Mint State 64 coin that sold on great collections J January 11th of 2015 in the amount of $352. So guys, that wraps up my kind of like expose on the 1968 Lincoln Sense. Again, from the very beginning to the end, I've produced a whole bunch of value, areas of opportunity where you could capitalize and really pounce on some of your coin roll hunting and just general searching of pocket change that you get from the store or the restaurants, uh, you know, as you come across them. But there is a lot of opportunity to find that one little piece of treasure that maybe to another person may look like damage or just may not look like anything particularly fancy at all. But, you know, to certain other people, they're worth the world. All right. And then for the world, they're willing to pay with, you know, a large amount of money and they're going to open up their purses and wallets to obtain that coin. So I hope you guys appreciate the 1968 Lincoln Cent um, at a glance video. Uh, hope you, hopefully you guys find some of these great amazing coins that I've highlighted for you today Again, would love to hear your comments. What do you think about this episode? Um, you know, that's important uh, your feedback is paramount in ensuring that my future videos go as smoothly as this one did I'm your host again Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound as always guys like share subscribe and as always coinaholics we are discovering together you guys take care. Have a wonderful evening. Enjoy the hunt, and I'll see you next time.